What if your home and all you associate with love and family were to be taken away from you by a stranger? The estate known as Downton Abbey belongs to the Earl of Grantham. Robert Crowley is the fifth Earl of Grantham and has three daughters, Mary, Edith, and Sybil. But he has no sons, and while the family feels Downton Abbey should be Mary's by right, the law decrees the heir must be male. So the eldest daughter Mary's marriage is paramount. If Downton Abbey is to remain in the family, Mary must wed the next Earl of Grantham, whoever he may be. One is that she will not inherit, so she has a title but no money. The other is her virtue. I don't believe a woman can be forced to give away all her money to a distant cousin of her husband's. Not in the 20th century, it's too ludicrous for words. Girl, this beautiful Turkish attaché named Mr. Kamal Pamuk visits Downton Abbey for a hunting party. She takes one look at him and she's all, man, I want to shoot. It won't be the last time Lady Mary's crush is in conflict with her practical nature. That night, Mr. Pamuk steals into her room and manipulates her into hooking up. But before he can get his rocks off, he dies. Not the kind of stiff she was expecting. Mary's lady maid and confidant Anna and Mary's mother Cora help Mary move Mr. Pamuk's body back to his bed. Mary takes full responsibility for his presence in her room and only the audience knows how he misused her. If this story ever gets out, it will ruin Lady Mary's reputation and she will never find a suitable husband. And so here we are at the question that kept us all on the edge of our seats for six seasons. Whom will Lady Mary marry? Bachelor number one, Patrick Crawley. He's Mary's cousin and the first heir. He dies on the Titanic. Bachelor number two, the gold-digging Duke of Crowborough, who heads for the hills once he understands there's no money. Bachelor number three, Matthew Crawley. He's a distant relation of the Crawleys and the next in line to inherit. And he is, wait for it, a lawyer. Why shouldn't he be a lawyer? Gentlemen don't work silly, not real gentlemen. Despite Mary's resistance to a marriage of convenience, she falls in love with Matthew. Matthew proposes, but then Cora becomes pregnant. If Cora gives birth to a son, Matthew won't be the heir anymore. All he'll be is a lawyer. This turn of events brings Mary's life to a pause. Cora's child is sadly lost before it is born, but Mary's pause was enough to break Matthew's heart. Matthew and Mary go their separate ways. On to bachelor number four, Sir Richard Carlyle. After splitting, both Mary and Matthew become engaged to other people. Sir Richard is a self-made newspaper publisher, which is either perfect for Mary or her worst nightmare. A woman named Mrs. Bates threatens to expose the story of Mary and Mr. Pamuk. Sir Richard buys the rights to the story, but then, unfeeling as he is, he threatens to publish it if she breaks their engagement. Meanwhile, Matthew's engagement to Lavinia Squire has its ups and downs. A man of honor, Matthew plans to marry her even though it's clear to one and all that he is still in love with Mary. Lavinia suddenly dies of the Spanish flu. After a period of grief and unnecessary guilt, Matthew finds his way back to Mary, but Mary is still bound to Sir Richard. At long last, Mary tells Matthew the truth about Mr. Pamuk, thus explaining why she can't break up with Sir Richard. Matthew gives her courage. You must not marry him. So I must brave the storm. You're strong. A storm braver if ever I saw one and armed with this courage, she breaks up with Sir Richard. Now that they've conquered all obstacles Matthew proposes, Mary's dreams come true. True love conquers all, and Downton Abbey is safe in the hands of the Crawley family, for now. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, is a different person to different people. The butler Carson thinks high of her. But Mary's sister Edith brings out the worst in her. With Edith, I just say things and then, they can't be unsaid. Tom believes you're unhappy. That's why you lash out as you do. But Matthew knows her to be kind. Mary gives birth to their son, George. Life couldn't be sweeter. But Matthew dies in a car crash the day George is born. Mary grieves, but the business of Downton Abbey is settled fairly quickly. Matthew bought half the estate after Robert met with financial difficulties. So now Mary owns half of Downton Abbey. At a time when large estates like Downton are often downsized and sold, Mary begins a journey to protect her home from a changing world. But this also means all that stands between Mary and marrying again is the memory of Matthew. Bachelor number five, Lord Tony Gillingham. Very dreamy, very eligible. Engaged. 
He set to marry Mabel Lane Fox, who's quite a catch. But Mary bats her eyes at him and he sets his vixen free. Mary enjoys the flirtation, but she's not ready to move on from Matthew. It's no good, Tony. I can't. I'm not free of him. Enter bachelor number six, Charles Blake. He bears a grudge against those of the upper class who don't do the work necessary to save their estates from going under. Once he realizes Mary hardly fits that description, he's smitten. With two eligible suitors in tow, Mary heals and becomes ready to love again. So now, let battle commence. <laughs> let battle commence. She chooses Tony, but Mary is once again caught between her crush and her practical nature. Tony has a solution. I want us to be lovers, Mary. I want us to know everything there is to know about each other. Their weakened sin reveals to Mary that Tony is not the one, and Mary returns to sender. Enter bachelor number seven, hot, steaming, bad idea, Henry Talbot. His birth is respectable, but he has no money and no position. He races cars. It makes Mary frightfully nervous, with good reason, it turns out. While Henry's racing, his friend and fellow racer dies in a crash. Mary struggles to put Henry off. Through the haze of her broken heart, she ruins Edith's chance at happiness. Edith's fiance, Bertie, breaks with her over the lack of trust between them. Mary's full of regret almost instantly, but the incident does push her to face her fears and welcome happiness. I assumed you would be fairly sorry, unless you're actually insane. Well, I'm not insane, but I am sorry. I don't know why I did it, not really. I've told you. Because you were unhappy, so you wanted me to be unhappy too. Now you're happy again, you'll be nicer for a while. Mary maneuvers the reunion of Edith and Bertie as soon as the opportunity presents itself. They reconcile and they get married. Mary sees them off, keeping to herself a special secret. What? You're sure? I'm quite sure. But you mustn't tell a soul I don't want to steal Edith's thunder. Which is in itself a sign of happy times to come. Want to know more about Mary Talbot? Make sure to check out the Downton Abbey wiki on fandom.